Hello, everyone. By way of segue into the next little bit of DLC, I'm actually going to cover a few game mechanics here that have sort of been glossed over so far. I really should have talked about these a long time ago, but they're not... They're a little boring. <laughs> they're important, but they're boring. So, Steady Hand McDuff. A fella is fond of flame, but he also offers a special service, Infusion. Infusion is a technique that a blacksmith can use to use a special stone, put it in your weapon, and then that weapon will have a special property afterwards. Usually, that special property manifests as elemental damage, but not always. There are some stones that do other things. You can also infuse shields, which will increase their various resistances. So there's several elements to infusion. There's magic, fire, lightning, dark, which I'll do about what you would think. And they require the corresponding stones. There's also poison and bleed stones, which will either increase or add, simply add that status effect to your weapon. And there's also a couple of special ones down there. There's raw, enchanted, and mundane. Raw is pretty simple. All it does is more or less remove or severely de or severely detract scaling from the weapon to increase its base power. Enchanted is sort of weird in that it uses your intelligence stat to scale its physical damage. It's not really very good. You're usually better off just enchanting with plain magic. Because more things are weak to the magic element than just physical. You can also use a Pale Stone to undo any infusion, so feel free to experiment. The last stat, Mundane, is super weird, and it scales off of your lowest stat. So basically, to get good use out of Mundane, you've got to have a very even stat spread. I would say it only starts to become worth it on Sun Weapons when you get to like 20 and everything, and that's not for quite a while. Now, Sun Weapons can only be infused with certain elements. For instance, this catalyst, the Staff of Amana, can only be infused with magic or dark. If you infuse a catalyst, the spells that correspond to the element that you infuse will do more damage, and it will scale better with that stat. So if I infuse the Staff of Amana with magic, then it would scale better with intelligence, but it would also do less damage with hexes and more with sorceries. As I mentioned before, shields can also be infused. For instance, the Rebel's Great Shield can be given 100% resistance in any element, provided you simply infuse it. If you have the strength for it, that's pretty useful. Other shields can do stuff like that, too. They're a little situational, though, because when you do infuse them with an element, there's a good chance that it will lose 100% physical reduction, and that's sort of a big deal. So if you do tamper with that, you might want to bring along a supply of Pale Stones, which are a pretty, pretty plentiful supply if you simply farm the old knights in Tower of Hade. I'm going to go ahead and infuse my Silver Black Spear with the Dark Knight Stone to increase its dark damage. The reason why, as you can see on the right, is that you lose a little bit of physical damage, but you gain a lot of dark damage. And that's sort of the thing with elemental weapons. If they already have an element on them, infusing them further is usually a straight-up upgrade. For instance, the Hade Spear will only lose 5 physical damage, but it will gain almost 40 lightning damage. However, if you try that on a weapon that simply doesn't have an element to begin with, then you will usually get worse results. You will get a sharper physical decrease and usually a less lucrative elemental increase. The same sort of goes for poison and bleed weapons. For instance, infusing a full moon sickle with bleed will actually make the, make the weapon sort of worthwhile, because it gets such a high bleed stat that you can almost one-shot bleed people, and that's pretty strong. Now, 
Statistically, on the numbers, it might look like infusing is always a good idea, because you have more numbers, even if it's split. But the way that scaling works, and if you're not specifically geared for, not geared, specced for it, you'll loosely, usually end up losing damage, simply because your physical scaling will drop off quite severely, and your magical scaling will probably not be as high, unless you're specifically specced as a magic user. In which case, you should still probably use a weapon that already has some elements enchanted into it, simply because the scaling will probably be better. Not all weapons can be infused. For instance, the Dragon Slayer Spear will always be lightning, and you cannot change that. It's sort of random. Some boss weapons can be infused, some can't. Infusion is a little confusing compared to the Ascension system in Dark Souls. But, on the other hand, it's a little bit more well-balanced, I think. Or at least, more well-balanced than that system was at its release. As time went on, they might have improved it quite a bit, but for the longest time, everything you did with your weapons could be summed up with enchant it with lightning and kill everything. does it for weapon infusion. The rest is fairly straightforward. Flame. Dear Flame. Dear Flame. 